I've got this nice triple integral for you guys today that was actually featured on the channel assistant Justin's GRE prep live stream, which happens twice a week. You guys should go check it out whenever it happens. It's a really fun time. So our goal is to find the triple integral of the function 3x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2 over the unit ball. So by the unit ball, I mean all points x, y, z where x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 1. The fact that we're integrating over the unit ball really gives us motivation to use spherical coordinates. So let's recall spherical coordinates real quick. So that'll be x equals rho times, let's see, it's cosine theta sine phi, and then y equals rho times sine theta sine phi, and then finally z is equal to rho times cosine phi. So let's just recall that rho and theta are like our polar coordinates for what's happening in the xy plane whereas phi is the angle from the positive z-axis. So keeping that in mind, we can see our bounds of integration for these three variables. So rho will come from the set zero to one because that's like our distance from the origin. Theta will come from the set zero to two pi, again, because that's like our polar angle, and then phi will come from the set zero to pi. Again, because we have to go from the positive z-axis down to the negative z-axis. Okay, so let's rewrite this real quick. So we're gonna have the integral from zero to pi, the integral from zero to two pi, and the integral from zero to one. And then I'm gonna do like a really quick thing and take this 3x squared and write it as 2x squared plus x squared and then we'll use the fact that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared. So that's a standard trick that you might use in a spherical coordinates problem. Okay, so that's going to leave us with rho squared plus, let's see, we have 2x squared, but that's going to be 2 rho squared cos squared theta, and then sine squared phi, and then we have plus this number two, and then the differential volume component is rho squared sine of phi, and then let's see what order we have. We have d rho d theta d phi. Okay, so that's looking good. So now let's maybe split this up into three triple integrals with respect to each of these. I think that's maybe the best way to do it. So let's see, we've got the integral from zero to pi, the integral from zero to two pi, the integral from zero to one. For this first one, we have a rho cubed sine phi d rho d theta d phi. Okay, so like I said, that is the first one. And then for the second one, we have integral 0 to pi, integral 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to 1. And then we'll have a 2 rho to the fourth power. Yeah, I guess this should have been to the fourth power. And then a cos squared theta and then a sine cubed phi and then d rho d theta d phi. Okay, so stuff is looking good and then we just have to integrate the number two, but let's notice that's just integrating the number two over the differential volume component. So that's just gonna give us twice the volume of a sphere with radius one. So the volume of the sphere for, with radius one is four thirds pi r cubed. So that's gonna be twice that. So that's gonna be plus eight pi over three. So we got off lucky with that one. Okay, so now we can start evaluating these one at a time. This one's actually not too bad, even though it looks pretty gnarly, because we'll have a one fifth from this rho to the fourth, and then it's kind of like well-known, well, it shows up a lot that this integral of sine phi d phi 
from zero to pi will give us the number two, and then we'll have a two pi for this zero to two pi. Maybe if you're like a little bit nervous about that, you can split this up into three integrals, the integral from zero to pi of sine phi d phi, the integral from zero to one of rho to the fourth d rho, and then the integral from zero to two pi of just d theta. And that makes everything like pretty straightforward. You get the number two from this, you get two pi from this, that gives you four pi, you get a fifth from this, so you have four pi over five. Okay, that's to be added to this eight pi over three, and then we've got this integral to finish off. But notice that this is a product of three one variable functions, so we can split this up as well. We'll have the integral from zero to pi of sine cubed phi. I'm gonna write that as one minus cosine squared phi times the sine of phi d phi. And then after that, we'll have the integral from zero to two pi of cosine squared. I'm gonna write that as one half one plus cosine two theta d theta. And then finally, we'll have the integral from zero to one of two rho times rho to the fourth. So that'll be two rho to the fourth d rho. Now we could pick these off just a little bit at a time. Notice if we were to integrate cosine of two theta, we would get like sine of two theta essentially up to a constant, evaluating at zero and two pi. Both of us will give both of those will give us zero. So in the end, we have to integrate half from zero to two pi. That should give us the number pi. Then we integrate this guy from zero to one, that should give us two over five. So there we've got two over five, like I said. Okay, so I've got two over five from that. And then finally, this bit's a li little bit tricky, but if we notice that this thing right here is negative, the differential of cosine phi, that's actually not too hard to work with. Okay, so let's bring that down. We have four pi over five plus eight pi over three plus two pi over five times, well, if we integrate one minus cosine squared phi with respect to negative d cosine phi, then we'll end up with one third cosine cubed phi minus cosine of phi. Okay, so let's see, putting that together, evaluated from zero to pi, should give us, well let's see, we get negative one up top for this and one down bottom, so adding those together give us two, and then we'll have a negative two thirds involved as well, so that's gonna be like two minus two thirds, that's gonna give us four thirds. So this whole thing right here is four thirds. So now we've got just a nice arithmetic problem. We've got four pi over five plus eight pi over three, and finally plus, let's see, that's gonna be plus eight pi over 15. But then if you add that up, I'll let you guys do that because that's just arithmetic. That will give us the number four pi, which is the final answer here. So before we end it up, I'd like to invite you again to check out Justin's stream. We put those up on the channel afterwards, like if you're psyched. So anyway, I think that's a good place to stop.